After a restful $90,000 vacation, just like so many other Canadians are able to enjoy, Trudeau is back in the House of Commons, along with the opposition. For question period, let's hear what they had to say in the first debate of 2024. Mr. Speaker, 2 million Canadians have to go to a food bank. Students have to live in homeless shelters in Quebec City. The cost of housing has doubled. In Montreal, it has tripled. Across Canada, the cost of housing is has doubled since this Prime Minister promised to reduce the cost of housing. Will he finally overturn the policies that create bureaucracy and inflation to allow developers to ensure affordable housing for people who need it. It is a disgrace what's happening in this country, economically and morally for that matter. But the focus of this video is going to be on how Trudeau's strategy and how the Liberal government's strategy is to make Canadians as poor as possible so that they have no choice but to beg the federal government for help. Millions of Canadians, as Polly have mentioned, are lined up at the food bank. Again, that's people who will have to go to the federal government for help. How many Canadians can't afford a house? That's how many Canadians who who are going to have to line up at the House of Commons for help? And so on and so on and so on. It is a particularly effective but sinister strategy that Mr. Trudeau has adopted. Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, the Conservative leader is uh, launching personal attacks to deviate the debate on housing and to avoid that people recognize the fact that he has no plan. Canadians. I'm not sure what personal attacks Polyev is launching, to be entirely honest. Is it a personal attack to say that Justin Trudeau has inflamed the housing crisis to an unmanageable degree or degrees? That's just a fact. The policies that Trudeau promotes means that Canadians are unable to afford homes. That's not a personal attack. That's a fact. No, that uh, it's not with slogans that housing will be built. Uh, he has tried in vain to delay the elimination of the GST on rental housing. He voted against the uh, housing acceleration fund which allowed that housing accelerator fund is a trojan horse make no mistake it's a trojan horse and it's a trojan horse for socialism and for this reprehensible new world order that trudeau and his cronies his cackle behind him sitting there like mindless drones want to infect canada with when you read the stipulations of that canada housing accelerator fund your stomach turns, your stomach flips upside down, you feel nauseated, you feel queasy, because you realize in an instant just how Orwellian it is, and how it works its hardest to try and turn the cities, which, to be honest, are already conquered by big government, by big socialist government, Jody Gondek, for example, what's happening in Edmonton, and so on, into these socialist slums where everyone is packed together like sardines no one's able to travel anywhere and instead all of your amenities are right close to home right just like orwell imagined of the construction or will allow the construction of more than half a million housing units so there's a lot of progress being done and we will continue to do that so Honourable. trudeau talks about 500,000 new housing units but think about the mathematics we have how many new individuals coming to canada every single year under this government the official position is what half a million new individuals half a million new individuals do you think it takes two months to build a home think about the increase in the demand for housing in this country supply can't meet it it's impossible supply cannot meet the massive increase in demand for housing and so the prices of homes continue to rise it's the only way for the market to try at least and level out and reach an equilibrium so that builders know how much to build and buyers know how much to buy for it's a devastating devastating policy being pursued by trudeau at the present time if he wanted to to solve the housing crisis again 
which he doesn't, he would decrease demand in the market. He would decrease demand for housing in the market. He would turn off the taps, overflowing the bathtub, so to speak. That is, he would stop introducing so many new individuals to Canada every single year and let the housing market level out. Leader of the opposition. Minister back from his $80,000 vacation, which he got for free. He said, like most Canadians, friends welcomed him for that vacation. He took two, not one, but two private jets paid for by the taxpayer, uh, burning 100 tons of greenhouse gases into the atmosphere. He wants to tax the heat and the food of Canadians. Did he pay the full carbon tax on each of the 100 tons of emissions that he put into the atmosphere as part of his $80,000 vacation? Brilliant, brilliant analysis, at least with that particular question by Polyev. Trudeau is a supreme hypocrite. We should call him Caiaphas. He's a Pharisee. He is the most intolerable of men because he forces all of these laws upon us, and yet he doesn't follow any of the laws himself. He tells us to stop driving so much, or at least his government does. Guillaume talks about transitioning over to a new form of transportation. Yeah, right, where no one is able to drive combustion vehicles because they're bad for the environment. But when dear Justin Trudeau wants to take a holiday to who knows where, for who knows how much, all of a sudden it's morally acceptable tolerable it's morally active for a matter of fact to exhaust how many tons of co2 into the air what a hypocrite the right honorable prime minister speaker the conservative leader has simply no plan to address climate change in this country no plan to increase the resilience of our communities in the fight against climate change Warming climate causes droughts. Droughts damage crops. Damage crops increase the food of gro- the cost of groceries. And yet, the Conservative Party cannot even agree on whether or not climate change is real. What does that mean? Of course, the climate changes. But if we're talking about the, once again, dystopian Orwellian worldview shoveled into our homes by Trudeau, that we don't believe. Not only so, but Trudeau's standard of right and wrong when it comes to this climate agenda is the earth. And it's ridiculous. That is, ask the question, should we have coal plants burning coal to produce electricity in the provinces, or at least in Alberta and Saskatchewan, perhaps? The answer is manifestly yes. Why? Because coal is a secure, stable, guaranteed, source of power we know that we have it when we need it and that means human flourishing that means i and other albertans and canadians like me are able to survive when it's minus 50 because we know that the electricity will be pumped into our homes because coal burns whether it's minus 30 or plus 30 that is good human life is good That should be the standard. That should be the measure for whether or not we decide to adopt a specific form of energy or power or fuel to produce, say, electricity. But that doesn't happen in Trudeau's vision. That's not his standard of right and wrong. No, instead, he cares about degrees. What temperature is the world? What temperature is the earth? What do my masters say in the shadows? That's Trudeau's standard of right and wrong. It might be that power is so much cheaper when we use coal, which it is. It might be that power is guaranteed when we use coal, like when it's minus 50, which it is. But for Trudeau, it doesn't matter. Instead, he still sees the need to transition to a different form of energy for all of us. Thank you for imposing your morality upon us, dear Trudeau, because that's what Gaia, in his mind, wants. Before we move on, I have a new book out. It's called Kingdom of Cain. It's a discussion on the insanity of progressivism and how Justin Trudeau's tactics and his beliefs are tearing this country apart. If you like to read it, it's available. And the link is in the description below. Mr. Speaker, we will achieve our emissions reductions, all the while sending Canadians checks to help with the costs of rising uh, rising prices. They're a real solution. The, honor, the Honourable Leader of the Opposition. 
Well, he says the greenhouse gas emissions are driving up grocery prices. He put 100 tons of those emissions in the atmosphere for his personal vacation. This is high tax, high flying, high carbon hypocrisy. Yep. Yep. Meanwhile, Canadians in Edmonton are facing, we're facing minus 50 degree temperatures on which they were paying carbon taxes just to, to heat their homes and stay alive. Given that he gives himself a free vacation at other people's expense, will he at least allow Canadians to heat their homes without his tax? Yeah, yeah. The right honourable Prime Minister. The Conservative leader likes to talk about the challenges Canadians are facing on the cost of living, but he refuses to take action in support of them. Uh, we, uh, he chose... <laughs> what? The measures that Trudeau is introducing are supposed to help? Us with the cost of living? Is that what anyone is seeing right now? Is anyone enjoying the fruits of the Trudeauian labor regarding the cost of groceries, housing, life itself? What a ridiculous statement. If a man really wants to help with the cost of living, then he will do all he can to reject the Liberal government's proposals, policies, and amendments was to delay the passage of Bill C-59, uh, uh, which is also hurting his own caucus. That's right. Does a member for Battleford's Lloyd Minster now suddenly oppose maternity leave for adoptive parents? Surely the member for Cumberland Colchester won't back down on his advocacy to remove the GST on therapy and counseling oh. services. Yeah. While the Conservative leader is muzzling his own caucus and putting himself first, we'll keep putting Canadians. The Honourable Leader... What is Trudeau talking about? Let's suppose, just for the sake of argument, that his policies actually helped Canadians or put more money in their pockets. Does it actually treat the disease? That is, all of Trudeau's proposals, as bad as they are, only treat the symptoms, the manifestations of the high cost of living in this country. He refuses to treat the problem itself. It would be like a doctor giving me some medication for a rash, I don't know, that I had on my arm, but only the rash, instead of asking himself why do you have that rash? And then I could tell him maybe I'm allergic to a specific food or maybe I came in contact with something that caused me an allergy. Who knows what? So instead of treating the allergy itself, the doctor is treating the symptom of the allergy and thus doesn't fix the problem. That's exactly what Trudeau, although he isn't even treating the symptoms, is claiming to do. If he really wanted to decrease the cost of living in this country, the first thing he would do is stop printing money. And then the Bank of Canada would have to destroy money. It's going to hurt. It's tragic, but it's true. There's too much money in the economy right now. And we have to enter into a period of protracted deflation to return the country to normal monetary levels. The opposition. This one is just too easy. <laughs> He walked into it. He had to muzzle a member from Newfoundland who called for an end to his leadership, joining another senator who did the same, because they understand that their constituents are literally starving and unable to heat their homes because the prime minister is quadrupling the carbon tax, doubling housing costs, and giving the worst inflation in 40 years. Why won't he listen to, instead of intimidating his member for Newfoundland, and put his leadership up to a review for... <laughs> The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Speaker, over the course of the fall, we've announced projects on housing that are for to create half a million new homes across this country over the year. We're working hand in hand with uh, community leaders, with mayors. We're making sure that we're moving forward on the priorities that are facing Canadians. Uh, in terms of standing up for his caucus, the leader across the way uh, will not even uh, mention the fact that uh, the person sitting three seats to his left sat, dined with a far-right conservative uh, uh, German politician. Uh, wants to abolish the United Nations. Is abolishing the United Nations now the official position of the Conservative Party of Canada? Hey Amen. First of all, it doesn't answer the question. But secondly, Leslin Lewis was absolutely right to dine with Anderson and also to call for Canada's emancipation from the UN. The UN is a revelatory 
organization. I'm talking about, of course, John's revelation in the scripture. It's an image of the final world order that's coming. And so we should do everything we can to separate ourselves from that egregious institution full of ruthless men and women who are directly opposed to the Lord Jesus Christ. The Honorable Member for Belloisie. So that's enough of that. The House of Commons is back. And once again, the theme of Trudeau, the strategy of Trudeau is clear. Make Canadians as poor as possible. Starve them of their wealth. Take all of their wealth through tax. Create a housing crisis. Create a food crisis. Push them deeper and deeper and deeper into debt so that they are so desperate for help. Fathers and mothers are so desperate to feed their children that they cross the Rubicon and ask the federal government for assistance. Think of the power. Think of the control granted to men and women like Justin Trudeau and the government should that tragic step occur and be taken. All Trudeau would have to say is, do this or do that, and you'll be gifted a loaf of bread. If you don't, we're going to have to keep bread or keep housing or keep this and that from you and your family. It's evil and it's wrong. 